Patrick Stewart cut his acting teeth in the theater, taking on numerous roles in Shakespeare and other classics. For his second act, he became known to millions as Captain Jean-Luc Picard in the revival of the Star Trek television and film franchises, as well as Charles Xavier in the popular superhero X-Men films. Now he tells his own story in a new memoir and sat down with Jeffrey Brown recently for our arts and culture series, Canvas. Glance has murdered sleep, therefore Cordor shall sleep no more. He would become one of the world's best known actors, but everyone has to start somewhere. And for Patrick Stewart, that was the day a teacher handed his class the text of William Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. He said, all right, uh, Act 4, Scene 1, you're all cast. All right, start reading. And of course, we all went. And he yelled at us, not to yourselves, you idiots. And then he said, this is a play. It's people. It's real life. It's not just being on a stage. You, you've got to invite people into it. Some seven decades later, at age 83, Stewart invites us into his own life drama in a memoir titled Making It So. There was something about having those words, even though I was mispronouncing them, in my mouth that felt good, felt I was in control. It gave you a voice, it gave you a self, it gave you a confidence. Yeah, exactly. What it gave me was that I could drop being Patrick Stewart. What does that mean? It means that I didn't really like who I was and I felt much more comfortable when I was somebody else. Actually, the first time I walked onto a stage and breathed in, because I was nervous, I realized suddenly I felt safer than I felt in any of my childhood years. I mean literally safe. Nothing bad can happen to me on this stage. As he writes, the future captain of the starship Enterprise grew up in a tough blue-collar town in the north of England without hot water or an indoor toilet. His first years, alone with his mother and older brother, were good ones. But his father's return from World War II changed everything. His father, described as a weekend alcoholic, would beat his mother, and young Patrick could not protect her. So there is this mix of wound and strength, I think, that runs through your whole life story. Do you feel that? I do. I feel it in my work. I feel it in important relationships. And um, I have benefited from it. And also from, oh, 30 years ago when someone I knew quite well said to me, have you ever thought of therapy, Patrick? <laughs> psychological therapy, and I said, no, no, why would I do that? Give it a shot. And uh, phoom, I was hooked right away. And that has been one of the ways that I helped to understand my life, my childhood, my father, understand him. Because he just made me angry and fearful when he was around. And he's one of the people I miss now because I'd like him to read the book. Stewart would work his way up as an actor, from local productions to studies in Bristol, eventually to the Heights, the Royal Shakespeare Company. He writes of lessons along the way, including how great actors develop, quote, an invisible cloak of truth that elevates their performances. The actor is both pretending and not pretending? I, I don't like the word pretending, although in a sense, pretense is partly what we're activated to do when we're acting. Mm -hmm. But the, the people that you mentioned, um, their performance, their work lives inside them. A lesson he learned when a director convinced him to take on one of Shakespeare's vilest monsters, Leontes in The Winter's Tale. And he said, I think you're fearful, Patrick, but what you must understand is that this character 
already lives inside you. And I, I was kind of outraged at that. And he said, but you're an actor. All you have to do is let it out. A whole other level of fame would come in his late 40s. While the actor's strike continues, Stewart asked us not to use clips from his work on Star Trek or X-Men, where, by the way, he co-starred with Ian McKellen. But fans well know how he, yes, commanded those roles with his voice and presence. In fact, though Stewart himself knew nothing of this new world when he first came to it. You were not Star Trek literate, huh? Not remotely. I wasn't even a fan. I wasn't a fan of sci-fi. <laughs> at all. And I still struggle just a little bit. But you're saying that in these characters for television and film, you were able to find the same way in that you found to Shakespeare on the, on the stage. Exactly the, the same. The complexity. Yes. And making sure that if the complexity was inside him, when I released it, it would make sense. It would be understandable. And to I yourself think as well as the audience? Always to myself, yes, but hopefully <laughs> as often to the audience. Um, that was always my objective. I, I wanted to bring the audience into our world. I was never that interested in thrusting it out, but just inviting people to come in and share what we were experiencing. Say, I am happy! I am happy! In 2013, he took to the stage again, working with McKellen in Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. What do we do now, now that we're happy? It requires connection. And that connection isn't made by yelling and acting. Um, there's a wonderful... Uh, American comic whose name I now can't remember, who was asked once, what is, what is acting? And he said, acting, acting is yelling! <laughs> <laughs> but not for you. <laughs> no, not for me. There is one big role Stewart still wants to take on, King Lear, but he says. Somebody actually the other day said, you know, you're a bit too old for King Lear. <laughs> can't get it right. So I feel that even though I may be too old to play Leah, um, I could give it a shot. <laughs> All right, we will look for your King Lear. Patrick Stewart, the book is Making It So. Thank you very much. Thank you.